I'd start by inviting Alexandra onto stage and with her would be Philip Henscher and Stephen Kelman and in conversation would be with them would be Pradeep Guptu from Calcutta. The rest of the panel of course will try and explain why they've exited Britain or st why they are ruining the fact that the vote wasn't sustained. So this, this, this panel is here and the presidency panel, I repeat, is happening at the Western Quadrangle. Good evening, uh, members of the audience. And it's a lovely setting to be in. And if we look, uh, if I look particularly blank, it's because I have a couple of powerful lights shining into my eyes. And there's very little I can see beyond the line of those lights. I hope uh, my fellow the panelists on the dais are a little better placed because this particular set seems to have a case, something to settle with me and they straight into my eyeballs. You, uh, we have a very, very eminent uh, panel to my right and uh, Alexandra in particular, Malavika thanked her. We can't thank her enough for asking to step in, for agreeing to step in at such short notice. And of course, then we have Stephen and we have Philip, who were, who've been there, who were scheduled to speak on this panel. We've had, unfortunately, a couple of dropouts. We are here to discuss uh, Brexit and the impact on arts. And uh, this is my suggestion: is this is how we play this thing? Uh, I'd pass the mic around, starting with Alexander, and then down the line uh, for some initial comments for about five to seven minutes each on Brexit and how you see it. And then perhaps uh, we could have a cross conversation and finally questions from the audience. We have an hour's time approximately. Uh, this setting is particularly historic. This is a memorial built to a British Empress. Like all Indian public projects, it was completed way behind schedule, much after she passed away. Uh, on this side of this memorial, we have a discussion on Brexit. On the other side of the memorial, appropriately in Bengali, we have a discussion on Presidency University. That's my university, the first university in Asia, celebrating 200 years. Much like India's multicultural, multilingual fabric, we have a literary festival running parallel sessions in two parallel languages, both of which, if I may claim, are as Indian as anything else that you, you can imagine to be Indian. The point about arts and Brexit. Well, I must warn the panelists that Brexit attracted an unusual degree of interest in India. An unusual degree of interest because of our, of course, our long-standing ties with Britain. Also because of the large Indian community that works in, in the UK and um, the students that go there, the scholars that come back, our legal fraternity is stuck with people who've trained in Britain in the legal system. Like Shami Chakravarti, many had been called to the Middle Temple or the Inner Temple and then chose to come back to India and practice law. So Brexit attracted a great deal of interest, not as much as a certain blonde gentleman across the Atlantic, but a fair amount of interest. Because of this, uh, the other Indian issue was Brexit was a decision to exit or to end the relationship. India had suffered something far more traumatic, but I think there was a certain degree of sympathy with what was happening with Brexit because Indians also had to give up their homeland and think about their identity and think about their place in the world and their space because the angst of partition forced vast communities to forget where they were and to find a new homeland, forget their identity and find a new identity. And perhaps these are issues that overlap with the overall Brexit, uh, Brexit experience for certain communities. The other reason I think that uh, uh, why Brexit and the arts has a particular resonance is because in the Indian context at least, uh, the written word songs, music, every aspect of, cul of culture has a very, very important role to play in nation building. This is a nation shaped by the arts and the culture. Because we are multilingual and multi-ethnic and multi-religious, 
It's the culture that unites us, which is why our national anthem is written by a Bengali poet who covers every province of India in the national anthem, including provinces currently in Pakistan. And it is culture that bound this nation together, that forged the national identity. And be it in Hindi, be it in Bengali, be it in Urdu, all the Indian languages contributed to creating the Indian nation, creating the idea of nationhood in the subcontinent. So the arts and culture are an integral part of our identity. And therefore, I think it's appropriate that Brexit and the arts should be a subject matter of discussion today. Now, before, before I ask Alexandra to speak, I just remind you, uh, there is some music outside. There's a fountain of joy to our north, which plays its own brand of music. There's a little program going along to our south where there will be some music. Don't be distracted by those. Listen to what's happening here. Behind us is a beautiful memorial covered in scaffolding. If you're wondering what the scaffolding is all about, it's because they're applying Multani Mitti to clear the marble. Multani Mitti is a cosmetic that ladies use to freshen up their skin in India as well. So there's about 2,000 tons of Multani Mitti being applied to the Victoria Memorial to bleach the surface and to clear the pollution from the surface. So don't let the scaffolding or anything else uh, distract you. May I now request Alexandra to start off this conversation. Thank you very much and thank you for this introduction. Um, I should probably start by saying, telling you a few words about myself. Um, as, you, as you can see, I'm not Shami Chakrabarti. As you can hear, I'm not Rachel Holmes. Uh, and, uh, I actually am someone who has been deeply wounded by the, um, by the vote and um, by the result of the referendum. And that's uh, because I was born in Prague, I grew up in Prague, I left the country because I was looking for um, a different way of living and, and actually um, Paul Beatty earlier said that uh, he spoke about the cost of resistance and I realized I was very young and I realized that resistance does cost you and I didn't want to spend my life resisting so uh, that's why I left at the, uh, in, in the late 70s and I'm incredibly disappointed to find myself in a situation you know uh, towards the end of, of my life or quite late in my life uh, where I suddenly realize that I've lived in a country and I've lived in, in a number of countries. I lived in Egypt, Greece, um, Australia, and I've lived in Britain now for almost 30 years. And I suddenly realized that I have completely misunderstood the country and I have somehow underestimated the, <laughs> this thing that must have been bubbling, you know, under the surface. I underestimated UKIP, I underestimated uh, Nigel Farage, I thought he was a complete buffoon, you know, we can maybe laugh at, but, uh, you know, he wouldn't be taken seriously, and, and um, uh, all that somehow, you know, was, was a big mistake. 